Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Um, not only are you an amazing musician, you are somebody who has managed to transcend styles of music. So many people have, have, have lauded you as honestly one of just the musicians of our time. Mm. You know, everyone from Rolling Stone to, to, to President Barack Obama to Beyonce, Jay-Z, it doesn't matter who it is, people have gone like, this man knows how to make music. What do you think it is about your music that connects with such a diverse audience? Um, you know, I gotta attribute it to where I'm from, Austin, Texas. Uh, I grew up running around on 6th Street. You could hear all kinds of stuff from jazz, blues, R&B, funk, country. Right. Um, all in one street, all in one night, seven days a week for hours and hours. And so I would just run around, you know, take my, my parents' car out. They used to call me Hotwire and just go run around <laughs> there and just, you know. Wait, your parents called you Hotwire? No, my parents. My, my, oh, my, your my boys. Buddy, my, oh, I was like, damn, your parents wire. are gay. I was like, your parents were like, God damn it, Hotwire, you doing that again? <laughs> yeah. I'd be like, those are some cool parents. Yeah, um, yeah, nah. Yeah, you, you loved music from an early age. Yes, uh, was, there, was there something about it that connected with you? Because, I mean, people love to listen to music, but you really had an innate, like, a, an intimate relationship with the music. Why? You know what? I'm not quite sure, but I'm still as interested as I was that day. I went to see Michael Jackson, Bad Tour, 1988, right. 89. I was four or five years old. Right. And uh, changed my life. You know, I never felt that type of energy. I never seen that type of excitement. You know, musicians tight, expressing themselves. Yes. And pushing out this energy. It was something that I wanted to be a part of. I wanted to be inside of it and figure out how it worked. You, you, you really have done that in many ways with your music. You know, people have talked about how uh, your music takes people on a journey, the, the way you command your instrument particularly. What I found interesting is I've seen you many times say that you, you don't want to be labeled as a guitar player. You, you, you're a lover of all music. Why do you shy away from that label? Um, I just, I don't, I don't want people to expect a certain thing. I've right. been doing a lot of things musically since I was a kid. Since my dad had a Casio keyboard, I was making beats and I've had drum machines and I got trumpets and saxophones and I got a bagpipes for no reason. I just like music. <laughs> you know what I mean? I just like anything that makes noise and I want to figure it out. Well, that's what bagpipes do, yes. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's hard to find a place to practice. Can you play them at all? N no. I don't oh, even know. I don't even know how it works. I don't think anyone can actually. I think it's just like a scam, and then the people blow it, and everyone's like, "I think that's how they sound." I, I don't know. But, I have no idea. Yeah, but you, you, you really love all of the music, and th this album, and and the music that you've made here are particularly interesting because you've always said as an artist, you're not the kind of person who's overtly trying to push push a message. But this land, uh, the album and the title track, specifically speak about America and how you see it today. What inspired the song and what inspired the title of the album? Uh, what inspired the song was basically, uh, it was that time, 2015, 2016, you know, elections were coming up. There was all kinds of stuff happening in the world. Uh, you know, Colin Kaepernick and just, you know, that situation and being black and from Texas. Right. You know, I had a certain situation where I moved into some property and, um, you know, someone came up to me questioning if I was the owner of the house or not. And, and it just made me flash back to, being a kid and, and, you know, being called names and, and uh, being, you know, somebody making me try to feel like I was less than or not right. equal to. And um, it was just kind of sad. I got kids now and I just, it was trying to write this album and I, I wanted to be very genuine about what I wanted to express. And that was everything, all the emotions. And unfortunately, in this day and age, I still have situations that make me feel like that. And so I just you know, put it on an album. It's interesting because one thing I've always known about you and your music, and even your messages, you've always been one of those people who, who's all about preaching love. Like, you know, you've always, you've always spoken about energies. What Try you put to. out, yeah, I mean, what you put out into the world, you've always got that mellow vibe. And when I first met you, I was like, oh, that's just because he smokes a lot of weed. But then, <laughs> but then I realized it was that and the fact <laughs> that, no, but that, that's, that's genuinely who you are as a person. You, you, you're all about that love. Was it hard for you to write music that, that comes from a place of love but still deals with the issues of hate? Was it hard for me? No, it, it actually wasn't. It was, uh, it was... It was something that was easy. Right. You know, it's just part of the human experience. And uh, I approached it like anything else, and uh, it, it just came to me just like that. I didn't think about it too much. I wasn't trying to, you know hit anything in particular, it was just how I felt my perception, and that's what I've been doing for a long time. I think 
if you go back to my albums, Black and Blue and the story of Sonny Boy Slim, my title track of Black and Blue is, you know, touches on this subject a little bit. Right, right. You know, I think it catches people's attention, attention a little bit more when you throw the N-word and a few F-bombs in it. It's something that you've done, and it's interesting because, you know, one of the reviews I read about your music really encapsulated what I felt when I listened, and that was that you're not using these words in a gratuitous way. You're really using them to encapsulate the feeling of what you're experiencing. When, you know, some people... Because obviously it's not the same as hip-hop where the N-word is just thrown around. It, it, it literally is you going, this is here for a purpose. This is here for a feeling and a moment. Um, when you're writing your music, are you trying to get people to feel what you were feeling when you experienced the story you're telling? I was trying to get myself to actually genuinely, honestly feel the way that I was feeling and express that. Right. You know, and uh, I tried running back the edited version and it just didn't have that fire. It's uncomfortable. Uh -huh. it's, it's, it, it's, it's fierce. It's, uh, it's just, ugh. And it's, <laughs> you can't express, I couldn't, for me, I couldn't express it any other way at the time. You know? Right. I mean, I maybe could have, but that's just what we got. 